Exactly one year ago, I received this plant in the mail and over the last 12 months, she has grown nice and big. In today's video, I'm gonna show you my full process from receiving plant mail to getting the plant used to my environment, putting it on a moss pole and then watching it grow into a nice lush plant. Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I love receiving plant mail. I mean, I have a lot of plants already, but I'm not immune to adding a couple of new plants every now and then. And exactly one year ago, I saw this beautiful philodendron esmeraldens online at a very affordable price. And I just couldn't say no. So let's have a look at what happened 12 months ago. Hang on, before we pass on to Jan from the past, Jan from the future would really appreciate if you hit subscribe. Over 50% of my viewers haven't subscribed to my channel yet. Hitting that subscribe button is for free and honestly guys, it makes a huge difference for me. So I'd really appreciate if you do and if you already have, you're a legend. Thank you so much. But now let's have a look at the past. I just got a plant delivered and I thought I'll unbox it with you. I'll show you how I start introducing the plant to my environment, how I protect my existing collection from whatever could potentially be happening with this plant over here uh, and so on. Basically like a little bit of like an onboarding. So I ordered this uh, last week and it spent about three days in the post with Australia Post. It was sent express from Queensland and we had really high temperatures recently as well. So I'm hoping this plant didn't suffer um, based on the high temperatures. It's from a plant shop up in Queensland called JS Plant Pickers. And they've had some really nice larger specimen. Oh no, I'm making a mess already. Oh no, why is there so much? What is this? I've never seen anything being packaged like this. Oh my God, what a mess. Is that the plant? No, that's just paper, right? Okay, I can see the plant. Look at this, like I've never seen so much. What is this shredded stuff being used? I suppose they really secured the plant, but I don't want to make a mess. Okay, so they sticky tape the plant to the pot, which is a good thing. So it was definitely very secure in there. Also, it was sent potted. So that's, that's great. Often, I mean, it also depends on the size of plant that you're buying. Often things are shipped bare rooted. So they might have been propagated in water or moss and then they're just, um, the roots might be wrapped in a little bit of moss or maybe sometimes even just a, a wet piece of um, paper and then it's shipped bare rooted. If that's the case, usually the plant goes through a little bit more shock than if it's sent within its pot. Essentially now the shock is just purely based on not having seen any daylight, maybe some temperature changes and so on. Whereas obviously when it's being shipped bare rooted, the whole shock in relation to, you know, the roots being touched, the roots being exposed, all of that shock is going to be in addition to the shock that the plant experiences having to be posted. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I mean, this was packaged really securely, but this is a nightmare to deal with. Oh wow, it is huge. It is huge already. And it has two shoes. I did not expect that. So essentially, if something is being shipped to you bare rooted, the plant goes through much more shock. So my ongoing onboarding process would be a little bit different. I would definitely put it in just a jar of water for at least a day, 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer. Really depends on how long the plant spent in that box and how well the root system looks by the time you get it. Just so it can rehydrate a little bit. Given that this came in its pot, I don't see the need to rehydrate it by putting it in water. I'm actually not going to repot this straight away. Now, definitely I want to repot that eventually and start putting it on a moss pole as well. But this plant has already gone through quite a bit of shock by being shipped here, by being taken out of its previous environment. It could have potentially been grown in like a hothouse or a greenhouse with perfect conditions 
and then it was in a box for a few days and now it is wherever i'm gonna put it so i wanted to get over that initial shock about the change in um, environmental conditions first before i introduce any further shock and uh, repot it now that comes with some challenges in itself because if i don't repot it it means that i'm gonna have this potting medium over here which I don't know if I can trust a potting medium. The potting medium could come with insects, uh, pests, gnats, and so on in them. So I would much rather use my own potting medium and get rid of anything existing. But, um, you know, it's a bit of a trade-off. Like, I don't want to cause more shock for the plant, but I also don't want to mess up my whole collection. So in a perfect world, I would isolate this plant for like a week or two, just make, just keep a really close eye on it, make sure that it gets used to my environment. Once I'm confident that it's, uh, it's happy in my environment, I would then repot it. And, uh, and after the repot, I would then introduce it to the rest of my collection. However, the challenge with that is I do not have a room in my apartment where I could isolate a plant while still giving the plant conditions that the plant would appreciate. I could isolate that in my bathroom that doesn't have much light, but that could actually cause the plant to go through further shock. The whole idea is I wanted to get used to my environment, the environment that I want to keep it in. And I don't want to keep it in a bathroom without windows or with just tiny windows. So I want to give it the conditions that it's going to grow in for the foreseeable future so that it can get used to those conditions. And then once it's used to those conditions, then I want to start repotting it. Otherwise, if I get it used to a set of environmental conditions now, then repot it and then change it to go somewhere else, it might go through more shock again. If you have the ability to isolate your plants while still giving them a spot that makes them thrive, totally do it. There's no harm in it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a thaw spray with water first just to clean everything, give it a bit of watering as well. The mix feels okay, but could probably be watered. I'll spray all of the leaves. I then also spray the leaves with Vitality Plus um, just in case there's any pests on there. Now, inspecting the leaves on first sight, I, don't, I can't see anything, but better safe than sorry. And I'll just keep a really close eye on this plant over the next few days. There's a new leaf unfurling over here, for example. So if this leaf unfurls like nothing happens, that's probably a good sign that the plant isn't really too stressed. So I will keep it in this room. Um, so YOLO, don't necessarily follow my advice, but sometimes, you know, the advice that I'm supposed to give you or the advice that you read on the internet and what is kind of realistically happen are two different things. But I'll take that risk, right? If suddenly I spread some sort of disease or pest to the whole collection in this room, then I know it was my fault and I can only blame myself. But if you do the same, you cannot blame me because I gave you a warning. I wanna get this on the moss pole ASAP. Look at all these juicy roots. They just scream moss pole at me. So. I'll do that. Actually, one other thing I might do. So see how all of the roots are sticking out on this side. This is also the side that all of the leaves are facing. Now I want to mount this side to the moss pole. So the moss pole is here. So I want the leaves to face the other way. So what I'll do is after I have given it a spray, I will position it like this with the light source coming from where you are so that the leaves can already start turning around a little bit. So I'll have an easier time mounting it onto a moss pole in a few days or weeks time. All right, I'll see you soon. We're back. So it's been exactly one week and well, not that much has changed, which is a good thing, right? Which also means that the plant seems to be happy and hasn't suffered through much from the actual shipping. I had it placed right here with the window right in front of it and i was hoping for the leaves to start pointing more towards the light they are slowly moving so these two the two main ones in the back they used to be more like this and now they slowly start going over i ultimately want all of them to face this way so it's time to put this on a moss pole I love putting my plants on a moss pole as soon as I really can because that way the plant can take full advantage of the moss pole. By taking full advantage, I really refer to... Oh, Jesus, that has a lot of roots. Look at that. 
<clears throat> in desperate need for a repot too. Um, so taking full advantage of the moss pole really just means that every single node can start growing into the moss pole and can start building a root system throughout the moss pole. If you add an already large plant onto a moss pole, the older nodes are very unlikely to root into the moss pole in hindsight. So you definitely want to get your plants on a moss pole when they're still small. Suppose if your plants manage to grow really large and mature without a moss pole, then you never needed a moss pole in the first place. But if your plant is growing really leggy, it's just giving you a lot of, it's traveling a long distance, but it's not giving you nice large leaves. It's not really increasing in size. It's just has really large internodal spacing, then I would actually cut the plant, propagate the cuttings, and then start with fresh cuttings on a moss pole, rather than taking a long vine and twirling it around the moss pole. Talk about twirling it around the moss pole. That doesn't happen in nature. Nobody goes around and twirls the moss pole around, uh, the, the vine around the tree. The vine is most likely going to grow straight up the tree based on the sun coming from the top. So I don't like twisting it around the moss pole. I think it looks a bit weird as well. I actually like all of the leaves facing the same direction anyway, so I can put them against a wall and save some space. But to me, it, to me, it doesn't look good, but also I think the plant wouldn't appreciate it because it goes against the way it would grow in nature. Alrighty, I freed all the medium. There are two plants in here, um, but I do want to plant both in the same pot because twice as much impact, right? But I did not expect the root system to be so extensive. So, I mean, you guys know I love giving my plants a small pot, but this is a bit of uh, a challenge, specifically given that the moss pole needs to fit in there as well. So let me quickly grab a larger pot. I think this is looking a little bit more appropriate. Perfect. Specifically, given the roots are so nice and healthy, I really don't want to harm them uh, by pushing it too far. All right, so I just need a moss pole. I have a full playlist with tutorials on how to make moss poles, how to water moss poles, how to chop moss poles, extend moss poles, and so on. So all information you could possibly want in relation to moss poles is in my moss pole playlist. So have a look through that playlist if you want to learn more about this. But today I really want to focus on putting a plant on its moss pole for the first time. And really putting a plant on a moss pole for the first time, that's like the, the trickiest part. Once your plant has grown into the moss pole, you just end up doing chop and extents going forward. So you take advantage of the roots within the moss pole and you just chop it and then you pot it up again. That I've never had any issues with that. The main risk is really right now because the plant doesn't have a root system within the moss pole yet. The root system within the moss pole is almost like a security. I've never had anything going wrong. Even if the, I had a, for example, I had the variegated epipremnum panatum. That variegated epipremnum panatum had root rot and stem rot. There was nothing left in the pot. But because it had so many roots in the moss pole, the plant survived and kept growing almost like nothing happened. So really, once the plant has taken to the moss pole, the chances of the plant dying because of poor root health is really, really unlikely. Of course, there could be other things like pests or you could stop watering, forget about it. Um, I mean, consistency is key anyway. If I forget to water for a month, my entire collection would be probably dead. Um, but yeah, right now is the riskiest phase, right? I'm giving this plant a brand new medium that it's not used to. It just came, like it was only shipped a week ago. It's not used to my environment yet and it doesn't have a security root system within the moss pole. So right now is like the risky time. I just need to be careful over the next few weeks and the moment I see the first aerial roots going into the moss pile, whew, that's when I can stop stressing. Not that I'm really stressing. Keep in mind, guys, we're only repotting a plant. I'm not performing brain surgery or something like that over here. It's just a plant and totally things go wrong. Things go wrong for me all the time as well. Sometimes things go wrong without me actually knowing why it went wrong as well. So that is totally fine. That is totally normal. All right, now just to give it its best chances of finding that moss pole straight away, I'm using 
my trusted little pieces of wire just to kind of pin the plant to the moss pole so it knows where I want it to be and once the plant has grown its first couple of roots into the moss pole I can get rid of these pieces of wire they're really just to give it a head start making sure it knows where the moss pole is technically it should do that all by itself given that the moss pole will be moist and roots seek moisture already just putting it on the moss pole you can see that these two leaves automatically will start pointing forward a little bit more based on the way that I mounted it on here so I will keep having light coming from this direction to create a more uniform uh, look and I suppose I just need to water it now and stay patient let's check in in a couple of weeks time or maybe a couple of months let's see well I'll check in with you again once I start seeing roots going into the moss pile. So, see you soon. Hello, and we are back. It has been nine months. You can't see me, right? I'm here. It has been nine months. So, it's been quite a long time in the making, but I think I finally have some results to share. Full disclosure, these leaves look huge, right? but it's also just because it has really long petioles and these leaves just happen to be quite close to the camera as a result of that. But while I'm here, let me show you the backside. This is the newest leaf and it's still hardening off a little bit. So it's been nine months of growing this plant and we've gone through move together. She's been growing in three, four different positions throughout my old apartment as well as the new apartment. So I made a bit of experience with her and she is slowly but surely thriving. So a couple of things that I learned about her is definitely that she's a really, really slow grower. Small internoidal spacing, so it's only up until here right now, but it has produced, it has grown nice roots into the moss pole over here. I'll show it to you closer later on as well. But she grows quite slowly, so like a leaf, unf like a leaf, a new leaf coming out of the caterpillar and then slowly unfurling and then slowly inflating in size takes like a full month or month and a half, like really, really slow. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm just not giving her the best conditions possible. She's just in my room with all the other moss poles. So she gets the same conditions as like my big velvet philodendron, for example, on that wall, supplemented by the mother grow light uh, and so on. So the other plants that are around her aren't growing as slowly. So I think it's more so something in her DNA than something wrong wrong with the conditions. Not a problem. I'm definitely at the stage where I have so many plants. I actually appreciate if a plant is just a little slower um, because it just means less work for me. What I do like though, and that's make that's making me think that well I am giving her good enough conditions is she's increasing in leaf size so, I'm, so I think the fur the last leaf that you would have seen was probably this one in the video and that was the one that was kind of pointing backwards a little bit on that note as well you can see that all leaves have now started facing forward well it's been nine months right? they started facing forward pretty quickly into the journey but this was the last leaf that you've seen since then it has grown this big leaf and then this big leaf. So there is a decent increase in leaf size with every leaf, which makes me think that, yes, I'm giving it the right conditions. It's just a little bit slower. But again, not a problem at all. There is also a second shoot. This is the largest leaf of the second shoot, so definitely a little bit behind. And I think that problem is just going to get worse and worse. Light is coming from the front. This bigger plant is just gonna steal most of the light from the smaller plant, but that's okay. See how we go. I like that it gives it a little bit more volume and so on. Now, over those nine months, I had zero pest issues with this. I think I cleaned the leaves once um, and I haven't had any other root rot issues or anything with this plant. I feel like it's a really, really easy going plant. It just tests my patience. Let me show you the root system. I'll come a bit closer. Uh, you can see that it has definitely grown a decent root system in this pod, but 
still plenty of room for more roots left. And over here you can also see some of the roots going into the pile. That white bit is just mineral build up, not an issue at all. So I think now that she has established, she's used to my environment, she's used to this new apartment, I reckon over the coming spring and summer she's really going to thrive. Fingers crossed. We'll see. I'll definitely keep you updated. And we're back. And yes, we have moved again. So over the course of the last 12 months, this plant and I have been together in three different places. So there was a lot of conditional change for this plant over the course of the 12 months, which makes me even happier to see some really good results. Now, the last update was about three months ago. And to be honest, not all too much has happened in those three months. It only unfurled this one leaf over here, which is the newest one. But again, it is bigger than the previous one. So whatever I'm doing is clearly working, but it just proves the point again that it is actually a really, really slow climber. Post move, I actually moved this plant into my greenhouse. In that greenhouse, this plant is pretty much getting perfect conditions, very consistent conditions, um, very high humidity, very high temperatures, uh, consistent airflow, um, and a lot of light, or much more light than I was able to provide this plant uh, indoors. Based on the higher light, I definitely noticed some issues initially with some leaves getting a little bit burned or a little bit damaged, but I suppose those leaves just weren't used to these conditions but it's been in that greenhouse for about two months now and it is starting to get used to the new conditions. But putting it in these perfect conditions didn't actually speed up the process in which the plant is growing. So I think it growing quite slowly is probably just part of the plant's DNA, um, at least from my experience in growing it in so many different apartments in various different conditions, I haven't necessarily noticed the changes or improvements in condition resulting in faster growth. But as I mentioned in the last update, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I have a lot of plants and it's great having a plant that requires so little maintenance. I have not had to repot, extend or do anything with this plant over the last 12 months. All I had to do was keep on top of watering and uh, clean the leaves every now and then. I've had zero pest issues with this plant so it doesn't strike me as a plant that is necessarily attracting pests uh, or anything like that. So it has been a really really easy grower in my experience but it really has been testing my patience. Now I want to bring you a bit closer because this is the newest leaf that it grew and yes it isn't necessarily growing faster but what happened since i put it in the greenhouse it has definitely grown better and thicker roots so that last node has two thick roots coming off it and sometimes these roots specifically in the greenhouse where the conditions are so humid these roots don't necessarily are super attracted to the moss pile because well the whole greenhouse is 90 percent humidity so they root seek moisture and they can find moisture anywhere in the greenhouse. So sometimes what I do here is I'll just kind of, you know, help the plant out a little bit, either by just tugging it under this root or using the actual grid of the moss pile, just so I can direct the root into the pot because we want that root to go into the potting mix and then create a li nice large root system. Let's talk about the root system. It's probably hard to see with all the condensation in here but you can see some roots uh, pushed against the side. Right, so basically putting it in these perfect conditions that the greenhouse has to offer didn't necessarily speed up the plant's growth, but it has encouraged more root growth. More root growth just means that there will be more potential for larger leaves and hopefully more leaves and maybe even faster growth going forward. But so far, so good. Just purely based on the continuous increase in leaf size, I know that I'm giving it the right conditions. I'm not concerned about the speed. Now, a couple of things I wanna do. I do actually wanna cut off these ugly leaves. I think they're just distracting me. My eye is kind of just drawn to, to these ugly bits. So I just wanted to cut that off. And the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a little trick um, that I do quite often, especially when it comes to managing my larger plants. And while this plant hasn't climbed very far and isn't growing all too fast, one thing that it does is it grows decently sized leaves and it 
that has very, very long patios. So especially in my greenhouse or you know, indoors, I'm challenged in space as well. Um, having these really long petioles just takes up a lot of space. Instead of one plant spreading that far, I'd rather have a neat look and have three poles next to each other um, instead. So what I sometimes do, I just take twine. Twine is just really nice and soft so it won't hurt the plant or the petiole. I just tie it to the petiole and then I tie it to the moss pole to bring the petiole closer to the pole. Let me show you from the front. So this is what it looked like before. Now from your perspective, it probably looked better before because the patio was closer to the camera making it look better. But sometimes I just like doing like this and then I can tie the other end of the string to the other patio and so on. And that way I can just create like a nicer, more compact look of the plant and it doesn't spread as far as if I wouldn't have the twine here, if that makes sense. Sometimes I also use this technique to manipulate whereabouts the um, leaf points and so on, right? So, or I tie two petioles together to bring them closer so that they don't have as big of a gap in between and so on. Basically, it's purely aesthetically driven um, over here. Now, I don't actually need to do this at the moment. Uh, I just wanted to show you because this plant with the long petioles is definitely going to be a candidate for that. I do that with my big glorious, my big splendid, my cupria, uh, most of my really big plants. Um, I'll do this with just to manage the space that they take up and create nice lush displays. Alrighty, now apart from that, I haven't done anything special over here with this plant to get it to grow up so nicely. I'm using my normal moss poles, the open ones that I make myself, and I have a full tutorial on how I make these moss poles. I use my regular plant nutrient, GT Foliage Focus, and I use it at a weak dilution on a weekly basis. So I'm aiming for around three millimeters per liter of water. And when I water, I water the moss pole using my upside down water bottle technique, and and the water drips from the moss pole into the pot and I empty out any excess. Now of course now that it's in the greenhouse I don't do that water upside down bottle technique all too often anymore because majority of the times as I mentioned the misters and or me hosing down the greenhouse is doing the watering. So I might need to consider adding a bit of slow release fertilizer or something like that because I really don't want to not provide the essential nutrients to this plant that would mm. enable her to thrive to the full potential. I have a potted up in my aeroid mix and I also have a full tutorial on how I put my potting mix together. As I mentioned before, I haven't had any pest issues with her whatsoever, but um, I think over the course of this year, I would have cleaned her thoroughly approximately four to five times, I think. I have too many plants to do it all too frequently. If you only have a few, I'd recommend cleaning it every week. So um, I just take them out into the garden or I take them into the bathtub and I just thoroughly spray it. Obviously, now that she's in the greenhouse, that again gets done more frequently, but majority of the year she lived inside and I just don't have too many plants to take every single plant outside to hoist them down every single week. Clean leaves enable the plant to optimize photosynthesis because, you know, there's no dust covering them. And at the same time, clean leaves also help prevent any pest issues. So the fact that I haven't had any pest issues might actually just be a result of me cleaning the leaves every now and then. Because everything worked out quite well with this plant, I haven't really had like a major lesson learned. I suppose it just proves the fact that my existing onboarding process or my existing process that I've been following with my moss poles for many, many years now is definitely working, specifically working for this plant. Doesn't mean that it will work for every plant, but proof is in the pudding. I let it grow for a year and it's clearly liking what I'm doing to it. I've also went to Tim from Grow Vertical and his greenhouse um, just recently, and he, he also had one in. He um, said it's quite a tricky plant to grow as well and he has a hard time not necessarily hard time sizing it up But he has a hard time keeping it large continuously specifically after having to propagate it and so on So I think it's a good idea to give it a large moss pole straight away That way I don't have to propagate it for a very long time if it keeps growing in that speed It will probably take about well three years or so to reach the top of its moss pole So hopefully I don't need to actually chop anything here anytime soon 
So that should give the plant the best chances of maturing further. This plant can grow massive leaves and that's really what I'm after. But of course, if you want to get these massive leaves out of uh, the plant that it can grow, you need to grow it as closely as possible to its natural environment. And that natural environment is just very tropical and that is very hard to achieve. So while yes, I think I had decent success at the beginning growing this plant inside, I think to really take it to the next level, moving her into the greenhouse is giving her the best possible chances of maturing. But we will find out and I'll definitely continuously uh, document the progress of this plant over the next year as well. Alrighty, I think it's time to wrap it up. I hope this gave you some insight into my onboarding journey. So basically what I do with plants that I receive in the plant mail. And I hope this also gave you some realistic insight into how much this plant can grow within a year. Now, of course, I'm sure there's other people that have grown this plant bigger and faster and stronger than me, but I suppose I have very decent conditions to offer. And despite my really decent conditions, this plant is not shooting it out of the park. So it grew like what, four or five leaves within a year? Like that's not mm, super impressive. That's just realistic. And I think that's also really important to show. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you next time.